Hi. Um, in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to configure um, SAML authentication against Active Directory Federation services for Zscan private access, um, but then also how to use Skim um, with Azure AD to manage account deletion and service termination. Um, it's a very tricky concept to get your head around, but um, bear with me, and hopefully this will this will become clear. So. Uh, Zscaler Private Access, um, I've got um, my SAML authentication configured against my ADFS server here. Um, I've also got SKIM enabled here. Now, ADFS itself does not support SKIM, um, and, and that, that in itself is, is, is a challenge if you want to do things like uh, deletions or removals or, or updating of, uh, of policy. Um, of course, with ZPA, we can trigger reauthentication periodically, um, but you can't do that on a on a trigger to say, okay, for this user, now we need to trigger reauthentication um, and disable their account. Whereas Skim uh, will do that, and, and in future releases of uh, Zscaler Private Access, Skim will also enable you to update group membership and everything. Um, so, so SAML authentication is configured. Um, and if we look in um, skim here, I can see the skim attributes. Um, I can um, see my skim users. Uh, here is uh, M. Ryan, myself, um, and I can see the groups. Um, I just have this one group called Internet ZPA enabled is the group that's being synchronized. Um, and if I look in Azure AD, uh, this is, this is my uh, configuration. There's the skim endpoint. I've got my bearer token. Um, and basically what we're saying is sync, synchronize all the, the assigned users. And the assigned users are the ones that are in the group internet CPA um, enabled. Um, and it's passing all of that data across. And I, you can obviously change what you synchronize and for whom you synchronize those, uh, those accounts. So, um, Let's just show you how that um, the SAML authentication works. So if I go to um, SAML SP um, Zscaler, um, and it, it did the SAML authentication against my IDP, returned back here are my um, my uh, my groups. Um, it's telling you everything about the way I authenticated. I did uh, um, certificate authentication and everything, and tells me everything about the device that the user is registered on. Um, if I jump onto my domain controller, I could come in here and disable this account. Um, and if we rerun that, um, it'll redirect to the IDP and return back and it's a failure state because you know I failed to authenticate properly against the IDP. The IDP said account disabled, returned it back to Zscaler, um, user is disabled. That's fine. But obviously, this is only at the point of SAML authentication, and it doesn't that isn't going to occur if the user is already enrolled. Um, so let's come back over here and uh, let's uh, re-enable this account. Um, and there we go. Um, so we're we're back to um, the user user authenticating properly, uh, and all of these claims rules occurring. So um, what we'll do now is let's actually launch the Scalar app. Um, that'll trigger the sign-in process. The user is authenticated. Uh, traffic is passing through ZPA. Um, we're, we're enrolled. And now we're going to connect. Once it figures out that I'm online, trusted network, there we go. So I'm on the trusted network because of my profile. ZPA is on, internet security is on. Um, so if I go to 888.com, I get denied access. And if I go to apache.welshgeek.net, um, that's passing through Zscaler private access. And I know that because apache.welshgeek.net is resolving to that IP address. So ZPA is, is, is functioning. And I can look in my diagnostics over here and I can see uh, if we filter this for the last hour, um, and update it. Um, I check the time. Uh, 
think we have a bit of a, a bit of a lag on uh, on the logging, but it'll it'll pop up in a second to tell me that uh, um, that the time is right. Eventually, we'll give it a second, um, but but trust me, that's going through Zscaler Private Access. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to disable um, this account. Now, um, the account's being disabled. Um, Zscaler Private Access has no visibility of this at this point in time. I've disabled the account. Um, I can still refresh that page and it still works because ZPA is is able to get that um, that access and um, and uh, and then also um, I'm still able my, my Kerberos ticket is still valid so I still have a valid session um, to be able to to access this application. Um, if I was to access something that needed a new Kerberos ticket, that would fail because my Active Directory domain controller is going to um, uh, block that request. Um, so because you know the Kerberos ticket isn't going to be issued, um, but um, if I was to rerun that SAML SP request, that's going to fail because the, the token cannot be issued. So let's come across um, to Azure AD um, and uh, let's just refresh um, what's going on with um, the authentication and the, the SAML, uh, the skim synchronization. My last skim synchronization was at 13.11, so unfortunately I just missed it when I started this recording. So we now need to wait um, the 40 minutes um, until uh, 13.51, so another half an hour, unfortunately, um, to be able to, to see that. So I'm going to pause the recording now, um, and we will come back to this, um, and we'll see what happens after the synchronization. So a 40-minute synchronization window. Okay, so... We're now back, we can see that um, we've now triggered at 13.51 um, a new synchronization, and now we've dropped from two users to one user. So if we come here now and we refresh this page, it's now timed out. Um, and if we look in Zscaler app, you can see it goes into a connecting state. And the reason for that is that the um, the account. If we look in, um, if we look in the admin portal, we can see that Mark Ryan has now been deleted from from here, um, and and by virtue of being deleted, the um, the user no longer has access, and it invalidates the the Zscaler authentication tokens. So, in summary, SAML authentication works. SAML authentication gives me that functionality um, against ADFS to enroll the user, get all my authentication tokens, uh, validate the device. But I can synchronize my Active Directory with Azure AD, but still keep ADFS as my authentication mechanism rather than, than, than Azure AD, um, but use Azure AD as the skim client to update access requirements in Zscaler Private Access. And of course, I can do the same in um, Zscaler Internet Access as well. So I hope that's useful. Um, of course, any questions, uh, let me know. Hope the vi video is useful. Uh, look forward to any comments. Email me, mark at zscaler.com. Thank you.